Hey guys, welcome to today's vlog. Wanted to show you. Merry Christmas, my little Christmas tree. Isn't she a freaking beaut? Doesn't it look like a pier one? Like Christmas tree? This girl. We just went for a walk outside. Can you just, oh my God, I can't get over her. She knows it. You know the camera's on, huh? You know it's on you and you're just being a ham for everyone to see. Okay, all right, well. No porn on the YouTube, Bailey. <laughs> oh God. Let's talk motivation. Let's talk the new year. Cause I got kind of loud with you guys this Sunday on my meal prep stories and you fucking loved it. And I love that you loved it. So I want to briefly look like just do a little talk and try to keep a brief about what steps to take and what to do in this new year to genuinely change your life. I did this for myself this year, January 1st, 2017 was the day I told myself shit's going to change. I was a yo-yo dieter, severely under eating. I was e eating 75 grams of carbs a day and I was starving myself. And then I would binge eat at nighttime because I was so hungry and I needed, I was so unhappy with what I looked like, how I felt. I was so unhappy that I couldn't enjoy food anymore. Something that I once loved so much and had so much control over and I needed to change. And what happened was I was ready to get uncomfortable. I was so uncomfortable in my body that nothing could trump that. So for me to say no to food and for me to go work out when I didn't want to, that was better than feeling the way I was feeling. That was better than waking up every morning, needing an IV of coffee just to get out of bed and having nothing fit in my closet and having to go to, this is a true story, having to go to Target to find the biggest, flowiest tops to hide the weight that I was putting on because I didn't want anybody to know the amount of weight I was putting on. I was posting on Instagram last year as if I was fit and had it all together. I was a fucking fraud. I was a liar. I did not have it all together. I was wearing flowy shirts and popping my butt out and making it look like my body, like I was like contorting my body and twisting it in a way to make it look like I was thinner than I really was. It was bad. And I was so uncomfortable that nothing was going to be more uncomfortable than waking up hating myself every day. So my advice to you is if you really want to change your life and really want to get a new body, get ready to be uncomfortable. Are you ready? I don't want to hear the excuses. I get so many DMs and so many emails from you and from my clients too. If you're a client and you know you've emailed me excuses as to why you're not hitting your macros or why you're not hitting the gym, stop. I do care because you're my client, but you, I can't do it for you. I cannot come to your house and take the food out of your mouth. If you, you're, you're emailing me and telling me how unhappy you are. If you're so unhappy, why aren't you changing the way that you're living? Answer that. Can someone comment below and answer that question for me? If you're so unhappy, why don't you try to fucking change? Why? I want to know. I've been there where it was excuse after excuse after excuse. I will never have the body I want. I'm Cuban. I hold fat in my stomach and in my thighs and in that inner tube area. I'm Cuban. That's my genetics. I will never be thin. That is what I said constantly for years. Told myself my body just can't digest carbs. I can't eat carbs. I don't know what's wrong with me. How is she eating so many carbs? But when I eat, when I look at carbs, my favorite, when I look at carbs, I gain weight. Whew. Have you ever tried to eat right for an extended period of time? No. Get ready to get uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable now so that you can be comfortable with your body later because this moment of feeling uncomfortable only lasts for a moment. You're going to wake up tomorrow and you will be so happy and so proud 
and so thankful that you forced yourself to get uncomfortable and do something that you did not want to do. Every single day when you're about to make a decision, before you decide yes or no, I'm going to do this or skip this, ask yourself how your future self will feel if you made that decision. That is how I stopped binge eating. When I wanted to get a second plate or if I wanted more than just a bite of something or I was fucking eyeing that buff bake birthday cake almond butter in my cabinet and I wanted to house the whole thing with a spoon, I would ask myself, Christina, how would you feel tomorrow when you woke up? I know the answer. If I ate that whole thing of buff baked almond butter, I would wake up feeling fat and hating myself. And that I would dwell on that shit all week long. So for what? Eat some almond butter to satisfy my taste buds for five fucking minutes or be upset with myself for a whole week. What is worth it? You need to stop and think before you act. Just like you teach your kids to stop and think before you act, do that same thing and, and, and do that for your life. Before you go for the cookie that your coworker is offering you, before you skip making dinner at home and order out Chinese food, ask yourself, what is the outcome of this decision? That is it. You, and you're not gonna like it. It's not gonna be fun, it's gonna be hard, and you're probably gonna be in a bad mood when you do it, because I know I was. I was a huge, I would go out a couple times a week for happy hour, I would crave that so bad. And I had to stop, and I was not happy. I thought life sucked. I thought my life was so boring. Oh, why am I living this life? I have one life, I should be living it and loving it. I'm lo living it and loving it now. The past is over. The future is fucking good and I am smooth sailing now because I got uncomfortable back then. And I need you to do the same. One major thing that really changed my eating habits was meal prepping lunches, of course, but dinners. That is my secret. Meal prep your dinner. I don't care that you're eating the same dinner every night. That is my favorite. You're eating, oh my, I couldn't eat the same every night. Why can't you? Can you not chew and swallow the same food two days in a row? Why can't you? Because you don't want to? Okay, then you can either meal prep a different dinner every single night of the week if you do that, or you can meal prep one or two different dinner ideas, make them delicious. My blog on my website has a ton for you. Suck it up, it's just food, eat it for dinner, get over it, and guess what? You probably won't even mind that you're having similar dinners every night, but you are just making up excuses in your head before you even go to do it, which is, oh, it makes me want to just like shake you. Before you tell yourself, I couldn't do that, just try it. And I'm not saying eat the same, eat the same boring dinner every single night. Make it fun, make it interesting. Every single week do something different or make two different dinner ideas in, in one week so you can switch it up a little bit. But make, make foods that you like. Don't overcomplicate things. I'm telling you, meal prepping your dinners will save your life. It did for me. I would meal prep my dinner, I would come home for, from my workout after work so I would be exhausted and I wouldn't have to think about dinner. Because what I usually would do was I would come home from the gym and I wouldn't want to cook. I wouldn't know what to make. So I would order out and order something terrible and then binge eat. So to stop that, you need to do something. You need to meal prep your dinner. So that is number one. Number two, and honestly, that is the number one thing I genuinely think is what changed my lifestyle and my, my obsession with food and my binge eating was prepping my dinner. So try it. And if it's too much work for you, then don't bitch to me that you don't like how you look. I don't care. If you're not gonna try, go to someone else and complain. So number two is journal. I has, have never in my life been a big journaler. I thought it was corny. I didn't think it would work. I was never that girl to write out my feelings. I, I needed to do stuff that I've never done before to get to a place that I've never been. I'm gonna say that one more time. To get somewhere that you've never been you need to do something you have never done to get there. If you want to change, obviously what you're doing now is not working. 
So you need to get out of your comfort zone because your comfort zone you don't like, you're unhappy with. So you need to develop new habits and it's going to be hard to develop a new habit. Making your bed every day is not fun, but if you want that to be a habit, you got to do it every single day until it just is something that you do and you don't even realize it anymore. Same thing goes for eating and working out in fitness. You just got to get over that little hump of having it being annoying and doing it every day until it becomes a lifestyle habit where it's just your routine in your life anymore and it doesn't bother you. So journaling, I would journal every day. I would skip some days if you know nothing was going on or if I was if I was good but for the most part I would journal when I was having a bad negative day I would write out everything how much I hated myself how fat I was how ugly I was everything I would rip myself a new asshole on that paper and I would leave it there on the paper and I would forget about it on my good days where I felt positive and motivated and happy and I was liking what I was feeling like and looking like I'd write all that down today was a great day I hit my macros I, I worked out it was awesome and then I would go back and reread those entries on a, on a bad day, on a day that I really wanted to go out to eat, to go, and I really wanted wine, or it was the weekend, it was Friday, and it's happy hour, I wanna go to happy hour, I don't wanna go home and sit there and eat, like I'm bored, I wanna do something. I would go back, I would read a bad day, I would read a good day, and I'd be like, whew, okay. That bad day sucked, I don't wanna hate myself tomorrow, let me just do what I set out to do and go to sleep early and wake up and I would always wake up feeling great. So journaling. Guided meditation is my number three. And I'm not saying 20 minutes, an hour, every single day of sitting there breathing, no. But I downloaded the Calm app, C-A-L-M, Calm, and I would wake up 20 minutes earlier than I was used to every morning. So I think I was getting up at six o'clock every morning. I would get up at 5.40 every morning, sit on my couch by myself and do a guided meditation for five, 10, 15 minutes. And it set the tone to have a great day. And it made me feel, it just centered myself. It didn't make me feel anxious. And I was just, whew, I could breathe, I was good. So meditation. Those three things, honestly, really are the reason why I am where I am today. And just simply doing the things that I didn't want to do in that moment and doing them anyway and getting out of my comfort zone, that's, that's all. Just do it. Try. You always quit right before you're about to hit a breakthrough. You've never gotten past that same one point. So for you to say that you can never eat carbs, you look at carbs and you gain weight, you smell food and you gain weight, that's bullshit. It's because you're not eating right for your body. You're limiting your calories so much. You're not eating enough. If you don't eat enough food, your body holds onto fat for dear life because it needs to survive. It doesn't know when you're gonna feed it properly. So it holds on to all the fat. So get a coach. Do something you've never done before. If you're not strong enough to have that motivation on your own, that accountability, accountability is everything. Hire a fucking coach. Make that investment to yourself. It is possible for every single person to change their lifestyle, to change their happiness. If I did it, literally anybody can do it. I made excuses for myself. I did not think I could ever get to where I am today, but I got uncomfortable because I was so unhappy. Use your unhappiness as your motivation to do the fucking damn thing and create a better future for yourself. Ask yourself before you make a decision, how will future me feel? How will future me think about this situation? That is it. Do it. 2018 is a new, new start. I know that's corny, new year, new you, all that bullshit. I did it January 1st, 2017. This whole entire year, I have not had a burger and french fries, my favorite food on the planet. I have not had one bite of a burger or a french fry. I'm alive, I'm living, I'm well, I'm happy. I'm in the best fucking body, best mindset I've ever been. Get uncomfortable now. So in the future, you can live a happy life and be comfortable because this is just one moment that is not gonna last. The future is coming. Think about the future every single day. So it's been 15 minutes, didn't want it to go this long. I suck at this, I need a podcast, I know, I know. But 
I'm gonna get to the gym. I'm gonna show you a high intensity interval training workout that does not include like running or sprinting. It kicked my ass yesterday. So here we go. So I hope you liked that one little round of that high intensity intervals that I was doing. Holy shit that kicks my ass like way more than running i like switching up my hit in that way where i'm doing different stuff that like really gets my heart rate going crazy i'm gonna put the workout in the description box and i'm also gonna put like alterations to the workout if your gym doesn't have that like assault bike or if your gym doesn't have the row machine i'm gonna do options so you can get that workout done and do it in your gym with your equipment. But right now, I am going to make my oatmeal because I am headed out to go get a new computer. My laptop is the worst thing on the planet and it's time. I've been putting it off and putting it off, but I work on my computer. I need a good computer. So I'm gonna go and blow some fucking moolah on a desktop, a new laptop, and an iPad and just get it all and be done with it. I just don't care anymore. I waste so much time on my computer, so I'm just getting my oatmeal ready. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna eat it for a couple hours, but I know that the Apple store is probably gonna take a little while, and when I get home, I'll be super hangry, and no one wants that. So I never, for my oatmeal, let me just go through really quick. I did this on my Insta story the other day, but I wanted to do a YouTube video in case anybody missed it, or if you wanted to rewatch like a whole video of my oatmeal. I weigh it by the gram and I never do one serving. So one serving of oats is 40 grams. I always do a random serving because I just do whatever fits in my macros. So for example, tonight I am cooking 53 grams of raw oats. So any one serving of oats is 40 grams and you need one cup of water for 40 grams of oats so whenever I do more than a serving I know that I'm gonna need a little bit more water than a cup so I don't even measure it I have 53 grams so I do a cup and like a quarter of a cup and if I need to add more water I'll add more water uh, I'll show you and see I'm just adding my water to my pot so I'm just doing a cup and like a quarter, a third, and I'm gonna put it on high, heat, and wait for it to boil. Now, you can, oh, it, oats are so easy to fix if they're too dry or too watery. So if, it's, if you go to the stove after your timer goes off and the oats are super dry, all you do is add a little bit more water and keep it on the heat for a couple more minutes and the oats will soak up that water. If it's way too watery, you just cook it for longer. But I add protein powder to my oatmeal, so I actually want it to be just a little bit watery because you need the water for the protein powder. If you, the biggest mistake you can make with oatmeal and oats is adding the oatmeal and oats. Okay, Christina. The biggest mistake you can make when adding protein to oatmeal is adding the protein powder too soon. So adding the protein powder, say you cook your oats in the microwave and you add the protein powder immediately and then put it in the microwave, 
it creates this really super weird consistency. So no matter what, every single time you wanna add protein powder to your oats, you wanna cook the oats first and add the protein powder after the oats are cooked and off of the heat. So I will be adding my protein powder once the oats are completely done. So I'm just gonna wait for my water to boil, but I always add some cinnamon to the boiling water to flavor the water so it's flavoring the oats like directly. So I will just stir that and then once the water starts to boil, I'm gonna add my oats, but I'm, I'm gonna take you through everything so I'll catch you when the water is boiling. All right, water is boiling like crazy. Add the oats, I'm gonna turn the heat down to a two setting. So like medium low. And then I'm just going to stir. Twenty minutes. I always do twenty minutes for the oats and I just let it go on low. Don't really touch it. I'll like check back periodically and just stir and keep an eye on it, see if I need to add more water. But if I need to do anything, I'll just let you guys know. I'm gonna take you through everything. So 20 minutes, I'm gonna let it cook and do its thing. See you soon. All right, so it's been 20 minutes and these are the oats. They're perfect. Perfect, perfect. So I am just going to put them in this tubware. Consistency is perfect. I, oh, it smells so good, I want it right now. So I'm using the ISO HD cookies and cream flavor, I love it. I also have um, vanilla, best protein, and whey HD snickerdoodle. So I will just go back and forth with whatever flavor that I feel like. But I like the cookies and cream with this because I have been adding cocoa powder, unsweetened cocoa powder, five grams is the serving size. This is a great way to secretly add some extra fiber into your meal. I am all about fiber. I try to hit anywhere between 25 to 40 grams of fiber a day. That is my goal. And I make sure I will do anything to hit that goal. Fiber is so important. I have like digestive issues sometimes if I don't hit my fiber, if I don't have enough fiber. And sometimes too much fiber can also get you to have a stomach ache. So that's why I stay between 25 to 40 grams. And the cocoa powder for five grams, one serving, it is three grams of carbs, but two grams of fiber. So it's a great way to add a little tiny bit of carbs, but good amount of fiber for the serving size. And it's chocolatey, delicious. So that's it. I add the Walden Farms for sweeten sweetness and then just a little bit of liquid stevia just to satisfy my sweet tooth a little bit more. And that's it. That's how I make my oatmeal. And you just play around with the consistency. If it's dry, add more water, cook it for a little bit. If it needs to cook longer because it's too watery, then put it on for five more minutes. Last, last night I made it and I had to make it for a total of 27 minutes because it was too watery. So and it turned out fine. It just really depends on the consistency that you want, but adding the protein powder will soak up some of the water. So if it looks a little watery right when you take it off the heat, that's okay, because you are adding powder, which needs to absorb the water as well. So I'm gonna top this with some cashew butter and a little bit of salt when I'm ready to eat it. But super simple, the consistency is always key. Add your protein after it's cooked, always. So I am gonna put this away. I'm like organizing my my cabinets now that I just, I feel like I'm in an organizing mood. So I'm just gonna finish that up and then head over to the Apple store, hopefully get myself situated with a new computer, new setup. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. will be Health is Easy cooking show. We're gonna do breakfast. So that, I have so many great ideas for breakfast. So I will see you then, bye guys.